All right, welcome back to Neo BJJ. This is Coach Duffy. We are going to go over today some training tips. This is going to be more focused on conditioning today. And one of my favorite methods is the threshold method, and we'll talk about that today. So the same format as we use for all the training tips is we're going to discuss the why and when. Uh, like I always say, if you don't know those, it doesn't really matter. So this specific method is going to be used to elicit a very specific result. And what we're looking to do here is we're tr looking to increase the aerobic power and how long you can maintain that uh, for your jiu-jitsu. So imagine pushing a higher pace for longer periods of time and how beneficial that could be to your overall game. So why? So pushing the limits of your aerobic system, BJJ, is one of the keys to conditioning for the sport. Uh, we see this all the time, uh, either with new people that gas uh, out of the gate and just can't you know, train very much because of that, or more when maybe upper belts you'll see in competition, they have someone that's in better shape is pushing the pace on them and they sort of, they, they lose that kind of power and that zap uh, and you'll start to make mistakes once you lose that. Uh, the threshold method, method is the best method I've found personally to increase the aerobic power. Uh, and the main thing is using the anaerobic system here is fatiguing. So when you get out of the aerobic, when you start using, uh, you sort of switch the method of where you're getting your energy from, the anaerobic system can be very fatiguing and that's where you see build a like drain. So obviously anaerobic be sprinting. You can't do that for a long time where a slow jog, you can go, you know, in perpetuity, most likely. So our goal with this. Uh, threshold meth method is to teach your body to work at higher levels of aerobic and sort of just teetering into the anaerobic uh, zone. When should you use this? This could be a, uh, definitely in the gen prep phase, uh, but I would say build up a good solid aerobic foundation before you do this. And what I mean by that is, you know, cardiac output. So what they used to call LSD or slow and low long distance, road work, things like that, where you're working in a heart rate zone that is building the vascularity and the size of the ventricle. We use it quite a bit in mid to late gen prep uh, for that specific reason. And then we revisit it heavily in pre-comp and competition phase because you're lowering the overall intensity as far as weights and you're going to be able to focus more on uh, sort of fight pace and drilling. So let me start this video here. I've got a, it's a little bit longer because we are doing conditioning. So what we have here is the keys to the method for a threshold. You can use any really cardio device here. We're using the Woodway. Uh, you could do, you know, jujitsu drills. The key is it's got to be something that you can get into your anaerobic threshold zone and maintain for the full period. And what we look at with anaerobic threshold is you can go and get a test, uh, which you know, depends where you're at. You know, maybe you have access, maybe you don't. Uh, or you can use a Morpheus, which you see here. And, and one of the reasons why I tout this and uh, like my athletes to have the Morpheus is it makes it a lot easier. So. In Morpheus, we're looking at the anaerobic threshold as being just a bottom of the red zone. And you can see here, this athlete is working his way up to that anaerobic threshold zone. And he's doing it on his own, where you see there's a coach, but the coach isn't actually doing the, you know, the increasing of the pace. Because we want the athlete, we want you to sort of understand what your pace is for your anaerobic threshold. So you can see their athletes just now reach anaerobic threshold, and now he will maintain that pace for the duration of the round. So you want to stay, you know, plus or minus five BPM. So anywhere, you know, 153, 158, and he'll maintain it and he'll adjust the speed as needed. So he maintains that, that level. You can do anywhere between three to 10 minutes per round or repetition and two to five repetitions per workout. So you can see here, we would have maybe him doing three minutes in this red zone, like very low red zone. And then we'd have him take three minutes off and do his active recovery. And then after those three minutes active recovery, 
we'd have him uh, ramp his way back up to the same zone, hold it for three minutes again, and then repeat. So think of uh, this method as very similar to, you know, a set of, you know, squats you're doing. You can change the repetitions, you can change the number of sets, and you can also change the, in uh, the intensity. So you can see here, this athlete has completed his, what looked like maybe a one minute uh, threshold round, and now he's working his way back to active recovery. And this is where you wanna focus on your breathing, try to bring your heart rate back into the blue zone uh, for the rest period, and then you'd be right back at it again. So we showed a little example here at the bottom of a three by three. It's typically where we start our athletes uh, once they have a good conditioning zone, where like I said, you'd warm up, maybe you know however long you want, five, 10 minutes, you'd push yourself up into your anaerobic threshold zone. And what I would say too, is if, if you're in using the Morpheus, you wanna do these on a day where you have high levels of recovery. Uh, this is a pretty tough method on the, or it's fatiguing on the body. So if you're in the low, you know, low recovery zones, we wouldn't want to do this that day. You could just push it to the next day. But that said, you'd warm up, get in your anaerobic thre uh, threshold zone, maintain it for the duration of the round, three minutes, slow it back down, recover for three minutes, then back up three, off three, on three, off three, and that would be your set for that day. So hopefully that gives you an insight on what we're talking about with threshold methods. What we're really looking to do here is train your working capacity uh, and your max aerobic capacity. That way you can push the pace, you can decide the pace of the rounds in the fight. And working on your energy control so you know how it feels and, uh, and how, you know, how to stay in your zones. So with this said, this'll, this method here will increase your power output. You'll be able to work at higher levels for longer which we think will maximize your full potential in jujitsu. Any questions, let us know. Otherwise, thanks, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.